Hi there, it's Coop here, sending you big love wherever you are right now listening to this. Today's short video blog is really about how do you know that you are growing spiritually? There's a few ways. So how do you know if you're actually growing and evolving on your spiritual path? Is it uh, the type of incense or essential oil that you wear or use? Is it based on the fact that you read The Power of Now 32 times? Is it the fact that you can stay in downward dog position for like four hours? Is it about the fact you can raise your kundalini? You can have non-ejaculatory orgasm that you drink green juice three times a day or that you don't eat meat or you've been to the Himalayas or India 14 times. You know, you can send energy, read people's mind. What is it that determines and how do you know if you are growing as a spiritual being on your path? So I believe that it's not just about how much you meditate, it's not just about in being able to read uh, certain mystical texts, you know, read information. Uh, there's a few simple ways and markers that I look for within myself and, and those that I work with at my events in terms of seeing <coughs> seeing how they are evolving and growing spiritually. So a few of those ways I'm going to share with you in the next few minutes. So one of the ways you know you're growing spiritually, strange enough, I believe, is when you start finding yourself, yourself, your persona, your personality, your story, yourself completely boring. You start losing interest in yourself, the you that you think that you are, your conditioned sense of egoic self. You start finding yourself boring. You start really losing interest in yourself, in your past history, in your story. Right? There comes a point, up until a certain point, <clears throat> what I found is we are so fascinated with ourselves, we are so interested in ourselves and our stories and our past and why we are the way we are and our stuff and, and it's so, we, 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 it's easy to indulge it and we're so fascinated in ourselves but the more you grow and evolve spiritually, the more you know that you are not just this conditioned self. The more you know that you are not just this conditioned ego. The more you know that you are not just this story. You are not just this persona. And as a result, you, t you start tapping into it, the deeper dimension of your soul, your spirit, who you really are, which is that unchanging consciousness beyond identity and beyond form. So what starts happening is, is as you really start knowing who you really are, the source of your being, which, is, which can never be conditioned, which, which no pain, no trauma, no nothing has experienced has ever happened to you, can touch that dimension of your being when you know that, that that's really what you are and all the stuff on the surface is not really who you are even though you might have been conditioned into believing that, you start losing the taste, right? It's like you start losing the taste for, for the drama that goes along with your personality. You start losing the taste for, for fascination with your own self. I believe that, that one, of the, one of the aspects of what creates suffering is we are so obsessed and fixated on ourselves or at least what we think is ourselves. So you know, I believe you know, you, you know that you're growing spiritually when you just Start finding yourself, yourself, as you know it, not that interesting anymore. That's a sign to look for. And connected to that, you start losing interest in things like drama. You know, the, the less evolved you are, the more drama fuels you. The more drama is the addiction to drama and adrenaline and stuff based on your own identification with yourself as this mind 
body ego because you're fascinated with it, you think it's real, it feels real, it, you, it appears to be real, you're so identified with this thing called you that, that connected to that, you are fascinated with, you, you love drama because it gives you a false, a false sense of aliveness. But when you're in touch with who you really are, you are in touch with the source of pure aliveness itself. You're being fueled by a deeper sense of aliveness and you don't need the ego aliveness that thrives on competition and drama and gossip and just all the superficial you know, transitory stuff out here. So you also know that you're evolving and growing spiritually when, when, when not only are you less interested in yourself, but the drama, you start losing your taste and interest for drama. You can also tell that you're growing and evolving spiritually when, as you know who you are, you see, the, the more you are conditioned into the identification with and of yourself as this mind, as this body, as your ego, the more you you are living in the world in a realm of duality, black, white, up, down. The world is a realm of duality. The more you are in the world, the more you are identified with the world, the more you live in duality, the more you are trapped by duality. And, and so as you tap into that, that deeper dimension of your own consciousness, which is free, which is essentially beyond duality itself, you start going beyond duality of right and wrong. So one way that you also know that you are growing spiritually, you can see in the right, in, 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 a, in, in, in a great direction, is you start moving beyond right and wrong, beyond, and often right and wrong is a perception that is based on your ego's conditioning. Because what's right and wrong is not necessarily right and wrong. Because what's right and wrong in America may not be right and wrong in India, may not be right and wrong in El Salvador, in Guatemala, in Japan, in, in China, in Tibet, in, in Uruguay, in Africa, in Nigeria, you know, in Australia, it's, it's subjective based on the conditioning of our culture. It's subjective based on the conditioning of our ego. Right and wrong is a perception based on the, the, the way that our ego has been conditioned based on our past, based on our programming, based on our childhood, based on our religious upbringing. It, it, it's so subjective. Right? So as you evolve spiritually, you free yourself more and more from your past, from your identity, which keeps you locked into a certain prison of your persona, right? It keeps you locked into a certain, a certain limited viewpoint of the totality of who you are and life and existence. So as you grow spiritually, you start moving beyond duality and in doing so you start moving beyond the perception of right and wrong based on ego perspective and you start seeing life from a higher soul perspective, an evolutionary perspective, not a limited viewpoint of right and wrong from the ego. So you move beyond duality and you start seeing, you can say life as, as, as the infinite sees, you start developing an infinite viewpoint and, and you start seeing the whole and as you start seeing the whole, what might look like right from one perspective shifts and doesn't look as right or as wrong anymore because you can see the whole. Right? Your perspective has shifted to a, sh uh, a much more wider viewpoint. I think that's a beautiful thing that happens as you start evolving spiritually. It's, it's less about right and wrong. It's more about honoring each person's, also honoring each person's unique soul's evolution. And you start realizing that we are here to grow and evolve. We are here to learn certain lessons. It's not right. It's not wrong that you and I as souls make, mis make mistakes that aren't really mistakes. And so... One of the things that starts happening then as you go spiritually is, is, is your sense of judgment starts falling away because what's right and what's wrong? Every soul has to go through certain experiences. Every one of us are, as, you, as human beings are here to learn and evolve. So we have to learn through different experiences. So, so how you may perceive right and wrong shifts, then judgment, the sense of judgment starts falling away. You stop 
judging because how can you judge because everything ultimately is perfect everything is perfect for your soul's evolution you start realizing your parents had to be that way your ex-husband or your ex-lover had to be that way and maybe they had to betray you everything had to be the way it did in order for you to evolve even though it wasn't ideal even though it may not be what you would choose next time you start realizing the inherent perfection of everything the inherent beauty and perfection in every for the evolution of your soul and that's the beautiful thing you start realizing the perfection like everything is perfect everything is perfect not as some concept but as a living reality everything is as it should be and as a result you know you're going spiritually when you when you actually stop resisting what what is you stop resisting life you stop resisting the specific things that are happening in your life there's no more well the experience I'm having is not the experience I should be having you start embracing what is like what is is what is and you just stop fighting reality that's also how you know you're going spiritually as you realize everything is perfect everything is exactly as it should be in this moment for my highest growth for my highest evolution my parents were perfect my ch my children were the perfect children for me everything that this even even the challenging situation is perfect there's things I needed to go through as a result of that bankruptcy of that illness of that situation to grow and evolve to because uh, I believe ultimately every single experience moves us closer to the divine moves us closer to realizing who and what we really are are and that, and as we start tapping into who and what we really are we start realizing a couple of things that we are we are interconnected so we move beyond separation you know you grow you are growing spiritually when you move beyond the sense of you over there and me over here you tap into a deeper level of oneness that black, white, green, orange, Jewish, Buddhist, Islam, Christian, Catholic, all those are labels on the surface, but we are all being lived and breathed by the one force, by the one life, by the one intelligence. Call it what you want, God, consciousness, you know, the divine energy, life force. We're all being lived and breathed by the one intelligence, the same intelligence that birthed creation, the same intelligence that is that is functioning the sun, the stars, the moons, the chihuahuas, the alligators, the giraffes, the dolphins, the, 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 the tulips, the roses, it's the same intelligence. So as we grow spiritually, you move to a recognition of the inherent oneness of life, the inherent oneness of all things. So what happens is that sense of separation starts dissolving, me and you. That sense of the separation starts dissolving and as a result, more love blossoms. And as a result of more love blossoming up, because I, if I realize I'm not separate from you and you're not separate from me, then there's more love that is inherently present. How can love not? be inherently present in the recognition that we are one at that deepest level and so i believe one way another way you know you are evolving spiritually is a natural byproduct of that is a shift from competition based paradigm of, of competition and, and scarcity like if you have then i don't then you start realizing there's an abundance of the universe in the universe we start realizing that we're on the same team. We're really on the same team. You know, we're being lived by the same life force. We're we're all in this together. So that so that starts opening up. But the natural byproduct and how it looks like in terms of practicality in your life is you start moving from a life of getting of selfishness, which is based on the idea of mine and yours and 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 your life. It doesn't mean you have to be Gandhi or Mother Teresa, but the, the impetus and the motivation for your life starts to become inspired and moved by service. Service starts becoming a natural uh, outflow of your heart, from your heart, as you start to evolve spiritually. You still might do the same job, but your motivation shifts, your motivation moves to one of being of service. So folks, hope this was helpful. If you are on a spiritual path, if you're on a conscious path, I hope this 
gave you some insight and these are some things that you can't force but these are some things that you can observe within yourself to realize where am I doing, how am I doing as it relates to some of these key things that will are just markers on the spiritual path, your evolution to know and see how you're doing in terms of your spiritual evolution and to see how you know and, and to know how you're doing in terms of growing spiritually. Folks, I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this, please do share this with friends in your life and subscribe to my, my Facebook, subscribe to my blog, subscribe to my YouTube. You'll receive weekly videos and inspiration to your inbox. I'm sending you lots of love right now. Love now.